Hi everyone, uh, Rail Stuff here again um, for another quick video. Uh, this time I'm looking at trees. Trees are, or have been, the bane of my life when it comes to model railway scenery. Um, they're really tricky to, uh, to do. Um, I mean, it's easy enough to buy pre-done trees, but they tend to look so fake and plasticky or too perfect or, you know, as in, as in, you know, unnatural. Um, and I've just never really found anything that I gelled with. But, you know, in, in having this business, it's important to me that, that we provide solutions for everything scenic related. So I've been experimenting with some different tree options of late. I think I might have stumbled across something. Uh, one of my suppliers um, has on their books a brand who you've probably heard of, uh, which is JTT. Um, so that's these guys here. Um, I assume they're an American brand because it comes in HO scale. Um, but uh, they describe themselves as the world's finest miniature trees. Um, they do they do some pre-made trees which are not bad uh, I quite like them and uh, I will be stocking them um, but also they sell these if I can get it out of the uh, polystyrene uh, they sell these tree armatures um, and they, they look just a bit more European slash British than a lot of the other tree armatures that you can get um, So I fancied having a crack at these and you can see over here that, that uh, Blue Peter style here's one I made earlier now. It's not perfect yet. It's probably not finished It will need a little bit more on there and I'm yet to see uh, You know just how well the foliage actually sticks to it, but so far so good so what I wanted to do is just show you how I did it. There's loads of videos on YouTube about making trees. Some of them take a huge amount of time. Some of them are quite quick, but I haven't quite been able to replicate the same results. So hopefully this one is something in the middle um, that is quite easy to, to replicate the same results. And it's based on uh, this blank armature from JTT Tree, uh, which will be available on Rail Stuff within the next week or so. It's a sycamore armature, it's a four inch sycamore armature. It comes in a three pack. Um, so the three pack, yeah, it comes with this, this polystyrene base with these pushed into it. Uh, and you can see I've worked with one and there's two that I haven't done as yet. I've tried a couple of different foliage options. Um, I tried the the Javis um, tree foliage, which is available through Rail Stuff. Um, that didn't quite work for what I was trying to do with this product. I think that's very good to go hand in hand with the um, with the hedge foliage. I really like that product as um, little hedges and bushes. Uh, it's superb, and I think that the tree foliage goes very well with that. And I'll do a video on on those, which are super simple, uh, at some point in the future. But for trees, I ended up going with uh, this pack here. So it comes. As, uh, as sheets of tree foliage in two different colours. Now this is available on Rail Stuff already. And it's from a brand called Jordan, who it looks to me like they might be German. Uh, yep, made in Bavaria. Um, and yeah, I mean the packaging looks like it was done in the 80s. Um, <laughs> but it, it's really good. Um, it comes with quite a lot in one pack. So what I did was I've taken mainly the darker color, uh, but a little bit of the lighter color. Uh, and I've basically shredded it into a box here. So I started off by just pulling it apart um, with my fingers, just like this. Um, and then what I did just to further cut it up was take a pair of scissors. Um, you don't have to use curved ones like these. It's just, that's all I had lying around. And then I just literally, um, 
get in there and uh, and do some chopping with it just to further break up those pieces because you want them as small and uh, and and crumb like as, as possible so once you've then done that and got that this, this almost sounds like a cooking recipe but once you've got that into the right consistency uh, you've then got these bits that you can pull out and use always a couple of bits of Javis in there so get rid of those what I've then done is in here uh, I've just got some standard PVA which I got from Poundland um, and I've poured some out into a little pot here and then all I do is take the brush, dip it into the glue, and then brush some onto the branches. Obviously not onto the trunk, and that's why I'm doing it with a brush, because you can do spray adhesives, but you have to be careful with spray adhesives. They can be a bit stringy and messy, but also you get it on the branch, and then you start dipping it into the, the foliage, and it can all get a bit messy. So once you've done that, Take some clumps of uh, the tree foliage and basically just lay it onto the glue. Um, now, some of it will stick, some of it will fall off, like that. <laughs> um, but it may, you may find that you need a bit more glue than you first put on. Don't, don't water down the glue. Uh, I know for most model railway tasks we end up watering down the glue um, but in this case you want it as thick and sticky as possible. So you see there I've just sort of pushed the, you know, I've pressed it into the glue. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to hold straight away but as the glue dries it should then stick in place so hopefully you can you can see this okay there. Now, I will just carry on uh, and do a little bit more. So there we have a, another tree that's had the foliage added to it. Um, some areas I've left quite sparse. Um, some areas I've I've got a bit more bushy, for want of a better term. Um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll now just um, push it back into this styrofoam base. Some of that stuff is going to stick and hold. Some of it's going to fall off, some of it will need uh, re-adding um, at a later date. But you can play around with that however you want and, uh, and get whatever effect you want. I'm just going to take this centre one out here as well so it's not interfering with the two either side that are trying to dry it. As I say that a big clump falls off so let me just stick that back on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let those dry for a couple of hours. It's reasonably warm in the shed so um, they should dry uh, not, not too badly. Um, it's just PVA. What I'm probably then going to do is in the meantime I'm going to nip to the shops and get some hairspray because I reckon a bit of hairspray over the top, light dusting, might just hold that nicely in place afterwards. Um, and we don't have any hairspray in the house because well that's why. Um, so I'm going to go get some hairspray from the supermarket and once this is dried I'll come back and spray that on I think. I 
with the magic of editing I have returned uh, and I have managed to get myself some extra firm hold hairspray uh, from the local supermarket. Um, now, I just need to make myself a little bit of space in which to do this. Uh, as you can imagine, I'm not hugely experienced with hairspray, um, but we are going to give it a very light dusting. You should probably do this in a slightly better ventilated area than I'm doing it. Um, but it's raining outside. So we've got a couple of bits that are sort of dangling a bit. So I'm just going to go around with the scissors and just trim those. Yeah, some dangling bits are good, of course, for realism, but then there's some bits that just look like they're falling off. So they're the bits that I've just gone around and removed. So I'm just going to scrape away some of that excess. One more little spray and then leave it. So there we go, that's a couple of trees, which I'm going to let that, um, that PVA completely go off. You can still see there's a couple of bits just in here where it's still wet. So I want that to go off completely uh, and the hairspray as well. And I want to see what kind of hold we get from the hairspray. But if it's worked, then the next time you see it, we should hopefully be installing it on this diorama, which I don't know how well you can see that, but it's a uh, roadside, a little mound at the back and a little Ancorton bacon butty hut. Um, it all still needs a bit of work doing to it. Um, but the first thing that's that's required is is a couple of trees on the back here. Um, and what I'm probably going to do is have one tree about here, um, another tree maybe about here just marking those out now you can see it was plaster cloth base underneath that's why the white is showing through um, <clears throat> I may then do the third tree and plant it down here somewhere uh, but then I'm going to use some hedge foliage to just build up some hedging around here um, and then that will start to, to, to uh, get to where I want it to. Um, this area is, I've used some super fine ballast, uh, glued it in, weathered it a little, just patchy, uh, and then used static grass, just two mil, just to get around it. You see there's a little path up to the door there, there's a bit of bare ballast showing through there where people would be standing to uh, get their, their breakfasty treats. Um, and then this roadway, uh, it's got a nice texture to it actually. I need to, there's a couple of dips in here to represent potholes that just need a bit more uh, colour going into them because the white's showing through at the moment. Um, but what I need to do, so the, the surface, you might be able to just see that there is a texture to that surface. Uh, that is because it's sandpaper underneath that's then been painted. Um, so at some point we'll come back and take a look at the next stage of this, but hopefully that's given you an idea 
of how to do some trees.